Okay, good morning class. Today I'm gonna to be dictating, and um, today is Wednesday, so we're a little out of order, but I'm gonna be dictating lit. Okay, today's lit, Wednesdays are lit days. Remember, you have to pass two at 80 and two at 100. And like I said, some of you have already passed your 80s, so you go on to your 100s. If you're not sure what you've passed, let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what you've passed, okay? So this is called, um, remember, at this point, I can dictate anything now. So your theory principles should come into play. Um, just trust yourself. Go over your theory over and over because you are required to turn in four hours of theory practice a week. So remember, you cannot progress unless you have your theory down. So very, very important that you, that you know your theory and that you practice it every day and not hesitate. I think that's what gets a lot of the students is the hesitation. If there's a word that you're stumbling on, just stop, look it up. Um, that's why that dictionary is really handy because it'll all be in there, how to stroke it out correctly. Um, and if not, if you can't find it anywhere, ask me and I can look it up and I'll tell you, okay? Um, but usually if you have your machine hooked up and uh, you write the word on your machine and it's the, with the software, It'll look it up and tell you whether you, you know, if it comes out in English, then you're stroking it right. So that's the nice thing about having, you have your dictionary built into your, into your software, which comes out in writing if you're using your dictionary. So remember, from now on, we just want to use your dictionaries, okay? Dictionaries on when you listen to my practice and uh, anytime you're listening to class practice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some words. I'm going to start at 70 words a minute. And let me give you words that come out. So uh, this is like a story. It's called um, Lady, Are You Rich? So anything can come out, any type of word. Uh, it's not the cat sat anymore. It's just anything, okay? So that's what makes it a little challenging. So um, we've got huddled comes out. Let me, I'm going to write all these words for you because I have a lot of time. So I'm going to write all these words for you, okay? Here we go. So huddled, remember? H-U-D, come back L-D. H-U-D, come back L-D. And remember, you can um, write the L-D together, okay? You have, as an ending, children is churn, churn. You have coco, coco. I think it comes out, yes, coco. Longo, longo. You have conversation. And I'm trying to make your notes a little bit bigger so you can see, okay? Conversation is K-F-R-G-S. K-F-R-G-S, conversation. You have kitchen. I think you can just write kitch, kitchen. Yes, one stroke, you all, K-I-F-N, kitchen. You have, so have a notebook handy, and that way you can write these down as I'm saying them right now, and then you can um, just go with your practice if you don't know how to stroke them, okay? If you know how to stroke them, well, then you're fine, and, and just keep up with me with the practice, but if you don't know, write them down. You have potatoes, so I'm just going to phonetically sound it out, po te to okay? So po, could I do longo? Uh, let me see, po, te, toes. No, so po, te, toes. Okay, that's the way it came out for me. You might try it other ways on your machine and see if it comes out for you. Um, remember, because sometimes the words come out different ways depending on how you hear it. So it might be stroked in um in the machine different ways so you have stomach stomach s t o m a k and then you have tidied tidy so tied d come back d three strokes tied d d i come back d and then you've got living room. Let me give you the brief. I don't know if you all remember this from theory. Living room, it's L-I-F-R-M, living room. L-I, 
FRM with an asterisk. Okay. This might not be too bad. Gravy is grave V, grave VI. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dictate some of the words, the ones I just gave you, and slow, okay? Huddled. Coco. Conversation. Living room. Stomach. Gravy. Potatoes. Cocoa. Children. Conversation. Gravy, potatoes, huddled, living room, tidied, soggy, silence. Uh, silence is S long I L N S. No. So silence. Okay, silence. Um, and then you have budget, B-U-J-T, budget. Remember, really important to be able to write some of these words on your own before you actually hear them all together. Um, and there was one more word I wanted to give you. Outside, O-U-D-Z, outside, O-U-D-Z. One more time the words and then I'll start some speed building, okay? Huddled, Coco. Conversation, outside, kitchen, budget, living room, stomach, potatoes, gravy, living room, potatoes, gravy, stomach, Outside, kitchen, cocoa, huddled, conversation. And then let me give you one more word. Against is G-E-N-S asterisk. Think of the asterisk for the S-T, against. S-T, so you put in a S asterisk, okay? And I'm going to start at 70 words a minute, you all. And here we go. Seventy words a minute, and this is three minutes. They huddled inside the storm door. Two children in ragged, outgrown coats. Any old papers, lady? I was busy. I wanted to say no until I looked down at their feet. Thin little sandals soft with sleet. Come in and I'll make you a cup of hot cocoa. There was no conversation. Their soggy sandals left marks upon the stone. I served them cocoa and toast with jam to fortify against the chill outside. Then I went back to the kitchen and started again on my household budget. The silence in the front room struck through to me. I looked in. The girl held the empty cup in her hands, looking at it. The boy asked in a flat voice, Lady, are you rich? Am I rich? 
mercy, no. I looked at my shabby slip covers. The girl put her cup back in its saucer carefully. Your cups match your saucers. Her voice was old with a hunger that was not of the stomach. They left then, holding their bundles of papers against the wind. They hadn't said thank you. They didn't need to. They had done more than that. Blue plain pottery cups and saucers, but they matched. I tested the potatoes and stirred the gravy. Potatoes and brown gravy, a roof over our heads, my man with a good steady job. These things matched too. I moved the chairs back from the fire and tidied the living room. The muddy prints of small sandals were still wet upon my stone. I let them be. I want them there in case I ever forget again how very rich I am. So let me write some words that come out. Remember, you've got to build up your stamina to listen to this. This is only three minutes. So your tests are five minutes, but let me write um, forget, F-E-R-G-T, forget, F-E-R-G-T. Um, there was another word, uh, thank you, is T-H-A-U-N-G with an asterisk, T-H-A-U-N-G with an asterisk. You have um, M-T-M. T? Yes, you can write E-M-T-I, M-T. Shabby is just shab B. S-H-A-B-B-I. You have um, saucers. Saw, sir, come back S. Saucers. Okay. S-A-U-S, come back E-R-S. Saucers. Sandals, sand, dull, come back S, okay? Sand, dull, come back S. Household is just two strokes, house, hold. And then you've got bundles. Remember, you can write bund, B-U-N-D, come back final L-S, okay? And this is gonna be at 80 words a minute. Oh, inside, so remember outside, O-U-D-Z, Inside NDZ, N final DZ. There's a group of words that anytime you have side, it's DZ over here. So suicide, S long U DZ, or SDZ, suicide, SDZ. That's side. So inside NDZ, outside O U D Z. There's homicide, suicide. And this is going to be at 80 words a minute. They huddled inside the storm door. Two children in ragged outgrown coats. Any old papers, lady? I was busy. I wanted to say no until I looked down at their feet. Thin little sandals sopped with sleet. Come in and I'll make you a cup of hot cocoa. There was no conversation. Their soggy sandals left marks upon the stone. 
I serve them cocoa and toast with jam to fortify against the chill outside. Then I went back to the kitchen and started again on my household budget. The silence in the front room struck through to me. I looked in. The girl held the empty cup in her hands, looking at it. The boy asked in a flat voice, Lady, are you rich? Am I rich? Mercy, no. I looked at my shabby slip covers. The girl put her cup back in its saucer. Carefully, her cups, your cups match your saucers. Her voice was old with a hunger that was not of the stomach. They left then, holding their bundles of papers against the wind. They hadn't said thank you. They didn't need to. They had done more than that. Plain blue pottery cups and saucers. But they matched. I tested the potatoes and stirred the gravy. Potatoes and brown gravy, a roof over our heads. My man with a good steady job. These things matched too. I moved the chairs back from the fire and tidied the living room. The muddy prints of small sandals were still wet upon my stone. I let them be. I want them there in case I ever forget again how very rich I am. And don't forget, um, again, G-I-G-A-N, again, G-A-N. Just a minute. I know there's a briefer again. Just a minute. Is it G-E-N? Yes, G-E-N. I'm sorry. G-E-N. And remember, include your periods in there. I know it might be a little tough because you're trying to get all the words, but you've got to include your periods when I pause. It'll make it much easier for you. Remember, there's quotes in there. I don't dictate with quotes. You have to know to put them in, okay? And this is going to be at 90 words a minute. And let me just write some carefully, you all. Is careful? No. No. Okay, three strokes. Care, come back FL, come back LI. Uh, hunger is just hung or H U N G, come back E R. Match, M A F P, come back D for matched. Uh, papers, papers, right? P, long A P, come back E R S. And then you have um, not too bad. There's not too many bad words that come out, you know, hard words to stroke. Uh, outgrown is just out with an asterisk, grown. Just a minute, I'm not grown. So you put the asterisk in out, maybe not out. 
Hmm. Let me get the dictionary just a minute. Um, let me get it for you out. Okay, so out is O-U-T with an asterisk, out, grown, G-R-O-U-N. It says to put the asterisk in. Okay, so you might want to enter that into your, because it is O-U-T and then grown, G-R-O-U-N. You should put them together. So if you wanted to, um, you can put this in your dictionary. So I'm going to highlight it. Both. I highlight the English portion. Control D so you all can enter it. You're going to type in the new text. Make sure that you don't misspell it. O-U-T-G-R-O-W-N. And then OK. OK. And then next time I stroke it, you all, it'll come out nicely. So out, you got to stroke it the same way, grow. OK. And then see? So enter that in. This is at 90. They huddled inside the storm door. Two children in ragged, outgrown coats. Any old papers, lady? I was busy. I wanted to say no until I looked down at their feet. Thin little sandals sopped with sleet. Come in and I'll make you a cup of hot cocoa. There was no conversation. Their soggy sandals left marks upon the stone. I served them cocoa and toast with jam to fortify against the chill outside. Then I went back to the kitchen and started again on my household budget. The silence in the front room struck through to me. I looked in. The girl held the empty cup in her hands, looking at it. The boy asked, in a flat voice. Lady, are you rich? Am I rich? Mercy, no. I looked at my shabby slip covers. The girl put her cup back in its saucer carefully. Your cups match your saucers. Her voice was old with a hunger that was not of the stomach. They left then holding their bundles of papers against the wind. They hadn't said thank you. They didn't need to. They had done more than that. Plain blue pottery cups and saucers, but they matched. I tested the potatoes and stirred the gravy, potatoes and brown gravy, a roof over our heads. My man with a good steady job, these things matched too. I moved the chairs back from the fire and tidied the living room. The muddy prints of small sandals were still wet upon my stone. I let them be. I want them there in case I ever forget again how very rich I am. Okay, and so um, let me go ahead and read all of it. And I'm going to do 70, 80, 90. I will tell you as I switch, okay? Please be sure you're putting in your periods. Um, if you're hesitating at a word, stop, write it down so you know um, what word to practice over and over. So let's say, for example, I'm hesitating at the word stomach. So I'm going to write, I'm going to look up stomach and I'm going to write stomach, right? That's how you write it. So I'm going to write it many times. I'm going to write stomach. Stomach. Make sure it's perfect. Stomach. 
several times until when you hear it again, you're not gonna hesitate, stomach. It'll just come to you naturally, okay? So just write it as many times as you can. Write a list of words that you're hesitating at while you're watching television. Just write them out, stomach, stomach, okay? And that way you just don't hesitate. That's how I used to practice and it really helped me. This is at 70, 80, 90, and I will tell you when I change speeds. 70 words a minute. They huddled inside the storm door. Two children in ragged outgrown coats. Any old papers, lady? I was busy. I wanted to say no until I looked down at their feet. Thin little sandals sopped with sleet. Come in and I'll make you a cup of hot cocoa. There was no conversation. Their soggy sandals left marks upon the stone. I served them cocoa and toast with jam to fortify against the chill outside. Then I went back to the kitchen and started again on my household budget. The silence in the front room struck through to me. I looked in. The girl held the empty cup in her hands, looking at it. The boy asked in a flat voice, 80, lady, are you rich? Am I rich? Mercy, no. I looked at my shabby slip covers. The girl put her cup back in its saucer carefully. Your cups match your saucers. Her voice was old with a hunger that was not of the stomach. They left then, holding their bundles of papers against the wind. They hadn't said thank you. They didn't need to. They had done more than that. Plain blue pottery cups and saucers, but they matched. I tested the potatoes and stirred the gravy. 90, potatoes and brown gravy, a roof over our heads, my man with a good steady job. These things matched too. I moved the chairs back from the fire and tidied the living room. The muddy prints of small sandals were still wet upon my stone. I let them be. I want them there in case I ever forget again how very rich I am. And so let's go ahead and write some of those words again. Here are some words. Again. Forget. Living room. Chairs. Potatoes, gravy, saucers, stomach, bundles, thank you, saucer, empty, silence, cocoa, kitchen, toast, fortify, against, outside, inside, conversation. Sandals, children, outgrown.
budget, living room, empty, hunger, stomach, bundles, paper, pottery, potatoes, gravy, sandals, again, forget. Okay, so if you're having any problems with any of those words, go ahead and um, write them down and practice them, okay? So I'm going to go on to a second speed building. Um, usually what we try and do is break it up into two speed buildings. And then um, what I'm thinking of doing is maybe doing some, um, some phrases from your books. Not from your theory books, but from um, briefs. Learn some briefs, okay? But I'll read this. It's 90, 100, 110. Actually, I think I'll do those briefs right now because this is a little faster. So let me just, the book, brief book is right here, okay? So get your pens and um, notebooks ready. And so uh, this is all theory briefs from your books. Uh, remember the A briefs, the B briefs, um, all of those. Well, it's some of those, but then it's other stuff again. Okay, so let me give you some words. It'll be um, more practice. And so we have, this is going to be 70, 80, 90. Okay, 70, 80, 90. And uh, these are going to be little um, phrases that you can use, okay? So all of these words have to do with uh, in, the word in. So remember, we write the word in, T-P-N-H, in, okay? So all of these phrases have to do with in. So let me give you the phrases, and if you want to get your notebooks, and here we go. I'm going to start with in a minute, in a minute. Remember, if I go too fast, you all can ask me um, how I stroke something out if you can't remember, okay? In a minute is N-A-M-T. I like that, in A because in is the N, the A is A, minute is M-T, in a minute is N-A-M-T, okay? in a minute. Then you have in a moment, in a moment. So this is a little different, N-O-M-T. You can either do N long O-M-T or N just O-M-T. I think I have to see the long O for moment because if you think about it, moment is in there. Moment, N long O-M-T. See, so that's moment. So you make it an N at the beginning and it's in a moment. In a moment, and long go MT. And then you have in addition. In addition is N I G S, N I G S, in addition. Think of the N for in addition. You write addition, the ending is shun, ishan, I G S for ishan, in addition. You've got in and out. These are really good ones, in and out. And it's N-O-U-T, nout. In and out, N-O-U-T, nout. And I probably will start off with this first. So you're just writing, practicing, and then do the speed building afterwards tomorrow, okay? but I do want to include some of these phrases because they're so important and there's so many. Um, you've got in any event, in any event. Remember, if you want, you can just listen to this afterwards, practice it right now, and then go back and review everything. It's up there for you all, okay? In any event, in any event is N-I-N-T. N-I-N-T, in any event.
And then you have in the hospital. You're going to hear this a lot, you all. So make sure if you know any of them, it's this one. In the hospital. And it's N-O-H-T. H-T. So think of it in the, is in the hospital is H-O-P-T. So it's already in there. So you're starting with an N, N-O-P-T, for in the hospital. N-O-P-T, for in the hospital. You're going to hear that because people are always in the hospital after car accidents. Make sure you pick it up. In the hospital. This is another good one. In your opinion. You're going to hear them saying, doctor, in your opinion, what caused this reaction? In your opinion. In your opinion is NERP. In is for the N. Your is U-R-P for opinion. NERP. In your opinion. So write these down, practice them over and over. Um, and you know what I think I might do, you all? Is I think in Blackboard, I will put it under handouts, the N, okay? Every time I cover these, I'll put them in, in um, Blackboard. So once you're done under handouts, it's going to be um, in, I-N, briefs, and I'll put them in there, okay? So you have the sheet, and you can print it up for future reference. I think that'll be a good idea. You've got injuries. J long U R for injure. Three, come back S, plural. Injuries. J long U R, come back final S. And then you have in evidence. Very important. In evidence. So in is by itself the N, and then evidence is E V D or E F D. I'm going to write it the easiest way. I'm not going to put the asterisk in because it's too much to think about. So in evidence, you can do like that, N-E-F-D or N-E-V-D. They both come out. But I'm going to stroke it the easiest way. Okay, in evidence, either way. And then you've got... In the morning, you're going to hear this a lot. When were you in the car accident? In the morning. So in the morning is N-E-R-N-G. N-E-R-N-G. In the morning. N-E-R-N-G. Think of it in is N for in. The is E in a phrase. E. Morning is R-N-G. Because you would write morning, M-O-R-N-G. So it's the ending of morning. Okay. So in the morning is N-E-R-N-G. And you're going to hear that a lot. In the morning. You've got in your words, in your words. So in is N, yours, you are, words is uh, R is D-Z, the ending of D-Z for words, words ends in a DZ, so in your words. That comes out a lot, just in general. And then you have uh, this is accident happened. It's just in there, so I want you to know. S-D-A-P-D, accident happened. S-D-A-P-D. SD for, because accident is S-D-E-N-T, accident. But SD for accident happened, A-P-D. You've got in the meantime, in the meantime, N-E-M-T. In the meantime, N-E-M-T. Okay, N-E-M-T, in the meantime. And then you've got in your own words. Remember, in your words is N-U-R-D-Z, in your words. 
in your own words. So the difference in there is the own. It's a new word. So N-U-R-N-D-Z. So when they say own words, you're going to put N for the own. That's what's different in that phrase. In your is N-U-R. Own is for the N. D-D-Z is words. In your own words. Remember, and I don't expect you to pick up all of them, but the ones that you do like that make sense to you, I highly recommend you pick them up. Okay, sometimes it's very hard to, to memorize it or to see it and recognize it. So if you all make flashcards, I promise it really helps and it makes a difference. Just go over them. When, when you have to do four hours of theory practice, this could be your theory practice. Practicing words over and over that you're hesitating at, writing them down. And if it's four hours that you're doing it, well, great. You're learning those words. So use this as time to, um, to do your theory, to do four hours of words that are hard for you to stroke out. You've got in respect. You're going to hear that a lot. In respect. So, of course, it's going to be the TP, the N, and then PT for in respect. RPT, sorry, in respect. N, and then it's RPT for respect over here. Final RPT. You're going to hear that a lot. In order to, in order to, so in order is N O R D. Just think in is the N, order is, looks like it to me, O R D, in order. Okay, in order. And then you've got. In reference, you're going to hear in reference a lot. N E F R N S. I like that. I hear I use it. N E or N, and then you've got reference in there. Okay, so it's N, and then you have the R's in there for reference. This is how you write reference. R E F R N S. So you're just putting the N with it. So look, reference R E F R N S, but I put the N R E F R N S, and it's in reference. Do your finger exercises, that helps so much, okay? It helps these strokes that are a little odd in stroking them out. It gives you that dexterity. And then you've got um, police report, police report, plort. Think of the PL for police, so PL, floor, PL, and then ORT, floor, P-L-O-R-T. Police report. Medical report. Medical report is MORT, M-O-R-T. Medical report, M-O-R-T. Medical report. And then you have in and of itself. You're going to hear that on your jury charges. So in and of itself, I-N-A-N-D, in and of itself is N-A-F-T-S. You're going to hear that a lot. I didn't think you would, but you do. So in and of itself is N for the in, and is the A, of is the F, itself is T-S, in and of itself, N-A-F-T-S. And then this is a little different, in an effort, in an effort is N-A-E-F-R-T, in an effort. So think of it like this, in, and for a effort is already in there, E-F-R-T, in an effort. And that's very good. That's a good stroke. I like that. And then you have inform, N-F. Inform is in, final in, N-F. At the time is T-E-T, -T, asterisk. Think of it as at is A, T for T for at. The is always an E in a phrase. And then this is for time, T for time, at the time, T-E-T, -E -T, and you've got to put an asterisk in. Information. You might already know this. N-final F-G-S, information. 
initial and final FGS. Police officer, you might already remember that, is Plifer, P-L-I-F-R, Plifer. And then you've got informal. So if inform is NF, put the L for informal. Inform is NF, put the L informal. Investigation, you might already know this, NFGS with an asterisk. And final FGS with an asterisk. How much HOUFP? You probably already know how much HOUFP. Invest. That was in your theory book. NVS. Invest. NVS. Okay. In the is NT. In the. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dictate these at 70, 80, 90 words a minute. Okay, so um, I'll dictate them again. And here we go. In a minute, and I'm going to write it on my machine. In a minute. In a moment. In addition. In addition, injuries, injuries, in and out, in and out, in any event, in any event, in the hospital, in the hospital. I don't know if I gave you this, but after the accident is AEFRX, AEFRX, after the accident. In your opinion, in evidence, in the morning, In the morning, in your words, in your words, accident happened, accident happened, in respect. In respect, in order, in order, in reference, in reference, police report, police report. Medical report, medical report. You have in and of itself, in and of itself. No, let me see, in and of itself. In and of itself, in an effort. In an effort at the time, at the time, inform, informal, information, information, police officer. Police officer, investigation, at the time, how much, invest in the, okay? And so I'll dictate these with sentences and this is gonna be at 70 words a minute, okay? 
Here we go. It may be a little hard to incorporate them, but um, just listen to it as many times, then go over it, write them in your notebooks. I'll have it up in Blackboard under handouts, and it'll be in IN briefs, okay? Here we go. 60 words a minute, or 70 words a minute. I will, you know what? I'm gonna start at 60, sorry, 60. I will be there in a minute. The judge will arrive in a moment. In addition to that, what other injuries did you have? He went in and out of the door several times. In any event, what were the final results? She was in the hospital for several days after the accident. In your opinion, what was the cause of the injuries to the plaintiff? What are the facts in evidence? Will you be there by eight o'clock in the morning? In your words, tell us how the accident happened. In the meantime, what did you do to stop the bleeding? Tell us in your own words exactly what your injuries were. In respect to your visits to the doctor, tell us how many times you saw the doctor? What did you do in order to prevent the accident? In reference to the police report, what is the name of the police officer who wrote this report? Is this medical report complete in and of itself? In an effort to find the robber, what did you do next? Did you inform the police at the time of the accident? What information did you give the police officer at the scene of the accident? Was it an informal investigation at the time? How much money did you invest in the new business? And so keep listening to this as many times as you need to, okay? And then this is going to be at um, 70 words a minute, 70 words a minute. Find a focal point and just write them down. Have your sheet right by your side when you're practicing this. Remember, this can be your theory practice if you want to use it for your theory practice, okay? Here we go, you all. This is at 70 words a minute. Here we go. Okay, 70. 
I will be there in a minute. The judge will arrive in a moment. In addition to that, what other injuries did you have? He went in and out of the door several times. In any event, what were the final results? She was in the hospital for several days after the accident. In your opinion, what was the cause of the injuries to the plaintiff? What are the facts in evidence? Will you be there by eight o'clock in the morning? In your words, tell us how the accident happened. In the meantime, what did you do to stop the bleeding? Tell us in your own words exactly what your injuries were. In respect to your visits to the doctor, tell us how many times you saw the doctor. What did you do in order to prevent the accident? In reference to the police report, what is the name of the police officer who wrote this report? Is this medical report complete in and of itself? In an effort to find the robber, what did you do next? Did you inform the police at the time of the accident? What information did you give the police officer at the scene of the accident? Was it an informal investigation at the time? How much money did you invest in the new business? Okay, and then this is gonna be at 80 words a minute. I will be there in a minute. The judge will arrive in a moment. In addition to that, what other injuries did you have? He went in and out of the door several times. In any event, what were the final results? She was in the hospital for several days after the accident. In your opinion, what was the cause of the injuries to the plaintiff? What are the facts in evidence? Will you be there by eight o'clock in the morning? In your words, tell us how the accident happened. In the meantime, what did you do to stop the bleeding? Tell us in your own words exactly what your injuries were. In respect to your visits to the doctor, tell us how many times you saw the doctor. What did you do in order to prevent the accident? In reference to the police report, 
what is the name of the police officer who wrote this report? Is this medical report complete in and of itself? In an effort to find the robber, what did you do next? Did you inform the police at the time of the accident? What information did you give the police officer at the scene of the accident? Was it an informal investigation at the time? How much money did you invest in the new business? Okay, and real quickly, going over the phrases one more time. In a minute, in a moment, in addition, in and out, injuries, in any event, after the accident, in your opinion, in evidence, in the morning, in your words, in the meantime, in your own words, injuries, in respect, in order to, in reference, police report, medical report, in and of itself, in an effort, at the time, inform, police officer, informal, investigation, how much, invest, in the, okay? And so now I'm gonna go back to some speed building and here we go, you all. This is gonna go back to your speed building, okay? So get your machines and here's your second speed building. Um, words that come out, you have Back to your speed building, okay? You have it's 9100 110. Globe trotting is the title of it. So you have Joan, Maud, Dover, France, Paris, French, Rome, Venice, Naples. So this isn't too bad, okay? But it is five minutes. Um, and so let me see, um, you have words. Remember, Joan is just how you hear it phonetically. Some of these proper names won't be in there. So Joan is J Longo and Joan. It might come out, it does come out. Joan, you have Maud. I would just stroke it phonetically, M-A-U-D, Maud. Dover is D Long O V, come back E-R, Dover. France, F-R-A-N-S, France. Paris, P long A R S, I think. Paris. Okay, Pair, P A R, come back, R I S, Paris. You've got French, F R E, F R P B L G, French. Rome, R long O M, Rome, R long O M. So if you wanted to enter, oh, Rome maybe with an asterisk? Yes, put the asterisk in. And then you've got Venice is Venice. V E come back N I S. No, maybe Venice. Yes, Venice N I S. Naples. Nape. All come back S. No. N long A P come back L S. Naples. And here we go. Let me go over the proper names again. You have Joan, Maud, Dover, France, 
Paris, French, Rome, Venice, Naples. Okay, and um, so words that come out in the actual speed building, you have college, K-L-E-J, college, K-L-E-J, college. Borrowing, borrowing. B O R, come back R long O, come back G. B O R, R long O, come back G. You have folks. S long O K, come back S, folks. Remember, we don't pronounce that L. Um, beginning is Jin, come back G. G I N, come back G. You have money is M U N. Money, M U N. You have fashion, F A G S, fashion. And then you have potatoes comes out again, potato. Remember, potato, come back as potatoes. You have Fascinating. Fascinate, come back, final G. Fascinating. Dock it, docked. Sorry, docked. D O K, come back, D. Docked. Um, appalling, appalling. Long A, Paul, come back, G. Appalling, maybe not. Long A. There it is, P-A-U-L, long A, come back, P-A-U-L, come back, G. Trophies, tro -f -e, come back, S. Trophies, T-R, long O, come back, F-I, come back, final S. Open is O-E-P, open. And then you have the C. S A E C ocean. You have sorrow. Sar ro. S O R come back. R longo. Canal. K A N A L. Or can you do? Or you could do K A N L. Okay. K A N L. So let me give you some of these words. Practice writing them, and then we'll do some speed building. Okay. Money, borrowing, college, nonsense, beginning, clothes, as in clothes that you wear. No. Let me see, clothes. I think you can write I know you can write in one stroke cloth. No. Oh, T aster, sorry. That's how I write it. I'm sorry. Clove, cloth, and then S. Final S. Let me see if you can write K L long O T asterisk G S. Yeah, you can write one stroke. K L long O T S with an asterisk. Close. College. Money. Beginning, close, fashion, mod, potatoes, fascinating, autos, hotels, sorry, open, narrow, canal, sorrow, Steeples, city, C, 
And so um, steeple is S T long E P. Come back L. Steeple. Okay. And this is going to be at 90 words a minute, and I'm going to write, I'm going to dictate all of it, okay? 90 words a minute. Here we go. Find a focal point. Include your punctuation, okay? Put the periods in. I promise it'll help you. 90 words a minute. This is on for work on your stamina. Did you hear about the trip abroad that Joan and I made. I often talked with Joan about it, but no plans were made. I did not think of going at that time as I could not go without borrowing money. I could not go to college because of my lack of money and going abroad was far from my thoughts until Maud wrote that her folks were thinking of going globe trotting and were eager to have me go with them. I did not think I should leave my job at the shop, but it was nonsense to stay at home. So after sober thinking, I obeyed my desire and posted a letter telling her I would meet them at the hotel on the coast for the beginning of a jolly time in the countries abroad. My first job was to get some clothes. I needed much, but as my pocket book showed that there was little money with which to get everything I needed, I fought off the desire to get lots of fashion models and chose a soft hat for the boat, a heavy top coat and some hose. I reached the city in the evening and the hotel auto brought me to the door of the hotel. I crossed the great hall and there I met Maud. After I gave her my wraps, Maud sat on the bench and she and I talked until some other people began to come to the lower hall to eat. Chops and potatoes tasted pretty good, and then a pot of good coffee was brought on. 
when the meal was over, my thoughts were on the trip. Crossing the ocean was fascinating during the whole time. There was a little gale one day which drove the people from the decks of the boat, but it was soon over and the motion of the boat began to be easy again. The boat docked at Dover and the folks were taken in autos to the hotels. Here I saw the stores packed close to each other. Then we came to the country roads with rows and rows of hedges. I was sorry to leave, but the next day I was on the boat again and off the off the France. I liked Paris and was sorry I could not stay and roam all alone in the stores and get some trophies. As I would not talk French, though, I did not have an easy time of it. It was appalling at first because I could not shop. I saw flocks of sheep and goats roaming over the open hills. There were acres and acres of grapes. After Paris and France came Rome and Venice. And I could talk for many hours about what I saw there. In Venice, So you have to get your stamina up, you all. So when I said gale, it's just G long A-L, gale. No, G-A-E-L, sorry, G-A-E-L, okay? Um, everything, E-F-R-G, E-F-R-G for everything. Um, there's, see, so you have to get your stamina. Countries, country. Okay, countries like that. K O U N T, come back. R I, come back. S, final S. Um, you have easy. E Z is one way of writing it. E Z, long E Z, come back. Z I. Uh, sorry is sorry. S O R, come back. R I. And then you have coffee. Coffee. K-O-F, come back, F long E, because there's two E's at the end of that. Hotel, hotel, H long O, come back, T-E-L. Okay, and this is going to be at 100. Try your hardest to get everything. If there's something you're hesitating at, stop and write it down. 100. Did you hear about the trip abroad that Joan and I made. I often talked with Joan about it, but no plans were made. I did not think of going at that time as I could not go without borrowing money. I could not go to college because of my lack of money and going abroad was far from
from my thoughts until Maud wrote that her folks were thinking of going globe trotting and were eager to have me go with them. I did not think I should leave my job at the shop, but it was nonsense to stay at home. So after sober thinking, I obeyed my desire and posted a letter telling her I would meet them at the hotel on the coast for the beginning of a jolly time in the countries abroad. My first job was to get some clothes. I needed much, but as my pocketbook showed, there was little money with which to get everything I needed. I fought off the desire to get lots of fashion models and chose a soft hat for the boat, a heavy top coat and some hose. I reached the city in the evening and the hotel auto brought me to the door of the hotel. I crossed the great hall and there I met Maud. After I gave her my wraps, Maud sat on the bench and she and I talked until some other people began to come to the lower hall to eat. Chops and potatoes tasted pretty good and then a pot of good coffee was brought on. When the meal was over, my thoughts were on the trip. Crossing the ocean was fascinating during the whole time. There was a little gale one day which drove the people from the decks of the boat, but it was soon over and the motion of the boat began to be easy again. The boat docked at Dover and the folks were taken in autos to the hotels. Here I saw the stores packed close to each other. Then we came to the country roads with rows and rows of hedges. I was sorry to leave, but the next day I was on the boat again and off to France. I liked Paris and was very sorry I could not stay and roam all alone in the stores and get some trophies. As I would not talk French, though I did not have an easy time of it. It was appalling at first because I could not shop. I saw flocks of sheep and goats roaming over the open hills. There were acres and acres of grapes. After Paris and France came Rome and Venice. And I could talk for many hours about what I saw there. In Venice, the black boats floated on the narrow canals. I remained in Venice for a day and then was off to Rome. 
After Rome came Naples, and after leaving Naples, the boat was bound for home. It was a Okay, and so you're working on your stamina. Okay, let me see if there's some words. Um, roaming is just R long O M, come back G. R long O M, come back G. Until is N L, until N L. Um, you have hall, like the hallway, H A L. You have Next, N E X asterisk, N E X asterisk. Next, boat, just B long O T boat. Um, you have little is just L I L, little, one stroke. Um, you have desire, D desire. I think you can write it like that. Or D. You can write it like that is one way, okay? Eager, eager, long E-G, come back E-R. Without, W-O-U-T, wout, without, W-O-U-T. And trotting, just trot, come back G. So make sure you're trying to get as much as you can. It is five minutes, um, and it goes on and on. Include your punctuation, okay? This is going to be at 110, five minutes. Try and get it accurate, remember. The accuracy is so important. You want to get it accurate. I want you to be able to read what you have. It's okay to drop, but just read what you have. Don't hesitate and stroke things out um, incorrectly. Think is T-H-I, think. One, 10, you all find a focal point and really try your hardest. Here we go. Did you hear about the trip abroad that Joan and I made, I often talked with Joan about it, but no plans were made. I did not think of going at that time as I could not go without borrowing money. I could not go to college because of my lack of of money and going abroad was far from my thoughts until Maud wrote that her folks were thinking of going globe trotting and were eager to have me go with them. I did not think I should leave my job at the shop. But it was nonsense to stay at home. So after sober thinking, I obeyed my desire and posted a letter telling her I would meet them at the hotel on the coast for the beginning of a jolly time in the countries abroad. My first job was to get some clothes. I needed much, but as my pocketbook showed that there was little money with which to get everything I needed. I fought off the desire to get lots of fashion models and chose a soft hat for the boat a heavy top coat, and some hose. I reached the city in the evening, and the hotel auto brought me to the door of the hotel. I crossed the great hall, and there I met Maud. After I gave her my wraps, Maud sat on the bench and she and I talked until some other people began to come to the lower hall to eat. 
chops and potatoes tasted pretty good and then a pot of good coffee was brought on. When the meal was over, my thoughts were on the trip. Crossing the ocean was fascinating during the whole time. There was a little gale one day which drove the people from the decks of the boat, but it was soon over and the motion of the boat began to be easy again. The boat docked at Dover and the folks were taken in autos to the hotels. Here I saw the stores packed close to each other. Then we came to the country roads with rows and rows of hedges. I was sorry to leave, but the next day I was on the boat again and off to France. I like Paris and was sorry I could not stay and roam all alone in the stores and get some trophies. As I would not talk French, though, I did not have an easy time of it. It was appalling at first because I could not shop. I saw flocks of sheep and goats roaming over the open hills. There were acres and acres of grapes. After Paris and France came Rome and Venice, and I could talk for many hours about what I saw there in Venice, the black boats floated on the narrow canals. I remained in Venice for a day and then was off to Rome. After Rome came Naples, and after leaving Naples, the boat was bound for home. It was a holly or jolly holiday, but I showed no sorrow when I saw the harbor and the lofty sleep steeples of the city. I brought many stories and glowing memories and loads of trophies from the shops to show to folks here. Much as I liked all the scenes over the sea, still it was good to be at home. It was good to hear the roar of the trolleys and to see so many autos pass by. So it is a relief to go abroad for a month or two. I would not live there all the time. And so scene, the scenery is S-A-E-N. Okay, S-A-E-N. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to get ready for your tests, okay? So um, make sure that you clear your memories, that you start a new file however you want to do it, but um, you can start fresh. So you have not all of this in your, in your, um, you know, let me ask Monica how to do that. Just a minute. Let me bring her in. Okay. And so get, let's get ready. Just a minute, you all. Okay, so um, I'm going to record it too. Monica's just going to tell you how to start with your wave, um, with your waves, how to clear the memory, okay? Okay, when on a wave machine, it's the third bunch, I believe it's the third button and the fourth button, and you just hold them down. Sorry, you guys, I have a different machine. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Are you, oh, okay, 
to clear your memory, first you hit on the bottom of the screen, you hit more, and then... So you're trying to end the file? I'm, I'm clearing, I'm clearing your memory. That's what you need? Uh, they're just going to start like brand, brand new because they just took all that down, then they're going to start with the test. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Sorry. That's okay. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. <laughs> all, all I do to do that. There. Okay, on the bottom of the screen, after you've written your practice session, at the button where it says end, you hit end, and it just closes it, and then you start up a new, a new screen. And then you can just take the test. And after the first test, you can hit end again because they'll change the end when you start writing hit end again and it'll save it clear it and then you can write for the second test and that's all you need to do and then what you do is you keep your you plug into your laptop and then you have the laptop read your notes and then you can transfer it into your laptop and then you do it one file at a time and you can tell by date and more or less the time then you transfer it and transfer it and then save it as your test one test two and that's it Okay, so just end the file. Yes, just okay. end the file. And if you have any more questions, give me a call. <laughs> Thank I'm you, Monica. Not, I might speak really fast. So, <laughs> uh, or come in and I'll show you. And that's that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Monica. Sorry, you all. I just brought Monica in <laughs> without giving her warning. Thank you, Monica. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get ready for your test. Hopefully, you've um, been able to clear your memories. And um, I'm going to start with your 100 number one. Remember, you're striving for the test that um, that, uh, if, that you need. So if you've already passed your 80s, you go on to your 100 lits, okay? If this is your first time in the class, then you're starting with your 80s. And so on your 100 lit number one proper names, you have Bobby, Donald Duck, P-E, I-Q, okay? So um, this is going to be 100 lit number one for five minutes, and it's footprints on my heart. Five minutes. Hopefully your memory's already clear and you're ready to write, okay? On a bitterly cold January day, a new student walked into my fifth grade class for students with learning disabilities, leaving his footprints on my heart. The first time I saw Bobby, he was wearing a tank top and a pair of old jeans, obviously too small despite the cold weather. One of his shoes was missing, a lace, and it flopped up and down when he walked. Even if he had been wearing a decent set of clothes, Bobby wouldn't have looked like a normal child. He had a haunted, neglected, lost look about him that I had never seen before and hope that I never see again. Not only did Bobby look strange, but his behavior was so bizarre that I was convinced he belonged in a classroom that taught social skills. Bobby thought that a rounded sink in the hallway was a urinal. His normal tone of voice was a yell. He was obsessed with Donald Duck and he never made eye contact with anyone. He blurted out comments continuously during class. Once he proudly announced to everyone that the PE teacher told him that he smelled bad and had made him put on deodorant. Not only were his social skills atrocious, but his academic skills were non-existent. Bobby was 11 years old and he couldn't read or write. He couldn't even write the letters of the alphabet. 
to say that he didn't fit in among my classroom students was an understatement. I was sure that Bobby was misplaced in my room. I checked his records and was shocked to learn that his IQ was normal. What could account for his bizarre behavior? I talked with the school counselor who told me that he had met Bobby's mother. He said Bobby is a lot closer to normal than she is. I searched the records further and found that Bobby had been placed in foster care for the first three years of his life. After that, he was returned to his mother and they had moved to a different town at least once a year. So that was it. Bobby's intelligence was normal and despite his odd behavior, he would remain in my room. I hate to admit it, but I resented him being in my class. My room was crowded enough and I already had several demanding students. I had never tried to teach someone whose abilities were at such a low level. It was a struggle to even plan lessons for him. The first few weeks he was at school, I would wake up to find my stomach in knots, dreading to go to work. There were days when I would drive to school and hope that he wouldn't be there. I took pride in being a good teacher and I was disgusted with myself for not liking him and not wanting him in my class. Despite the fact that he drove me crazy, I tried to treat him like all of the other And then it continues. So whatever you heard on that first 100, it continues. So what you could do is keep writing and then you can edit the one you feel better. So maybe a PS, PS, PS. Oh, it's not gonna do it because um, it turned off, but PF, PF, PF. So you know where to break it up, okay? So your 100 lit number two, you have Bobby Salvation Army. And this is gonna be One hundred number two for five minutes. Literary. About a month after he started at the school, Bobby came into my room with his shirt torn and his nose bloodied. He had been jumped on by a group of my students. Bobby sat down at his desk and pretended that nothing was wrong. He opened his book and tried to read it as blood and tears mingled and dripped onto the pages. Outraged, I sent Bobby to the nurse and unleashed a verbal fury on the students who had hurt him. I told them that they ought to be ashamed of themselves for not liking him because he was different. I yelled that just because he acted strangely, this was even more reason to treat him kindly. At some point during my verbal assault, I started to listen to my own words 
and I resolved that I would have to change my thoughts toward him as well. That incident changed how I felt about Bobby. I finally saw past his bizarre behavior and saw a little boy in desperate need of someone to take care of him. I realized that the true test of a teacher was not just teaching academics, but meeting the needs of the students. Bobby had extraordinary needs that I had to fill. I started buying Bobby clothes from the Salvation Army. I knew that the students made fun of him because he only had three shirts. I carefully chose clothing that was in good condition and in style. He was thrilled with the clothes and it improved his self-esteem tremendously. I escorted Bobby to classes whenever he was worried about being beaten up. I spent extra time with him before school working on homework. It was amazing to see the change in Bobby that resulted from the new clothes and extra attention, he came out of his shell and I found that he really was a likable child. His behavior improved and he even started making brief eye contact with me. I no longer dreaded going to work. I actually looked forward to seeing him coming down the hallway in the morning. I worried about him when he was absent. I noticed that as my attitude toward him changed, so did the behavior of the other students. They stopped picking on him and included him as a part of the group. One day, Bobby brought a note to school that said, he would be moving in two days. I was heartbroken. I hadn't managed to get him all of the clothes I wanted to. I went to a store on my break and bought him an outfit. I gave it to him and told him that it was his goodbye present. When he saw the tags on the clothes, he said, I can't ever remember wearing brand new clothes before. Some of my students found out that Bobby was moving and after class, several of them asked if they could give him a goodbye present party the next day. I said, sure. And then we'll get ready for your 80. So turn off your machine, oh, restart it, however you want to do it, okay? These are the 80s, just to break up the files. Okay. So you have on your test 80, number one, proper names. You have, remember the proper names are in Blackboard when you click in for this week. And that's just telling you how to capitalize, um, what words have to be capitalized or how they're spelled. They do that for you as, at the state test as well. You have mom, World War II, trolley car, at a glance. So what I would do is have your proper names right by your side, print them up beforehand, and then take the test, okay? So you know what to capitalize and what not to. And here we go. This is 80 number one for five minutes lit test. I used to be the menu reader when you were little. 
she said. I understood instantly what she was saying. From caregiver to care for, from cared for to caregiver, our relationship had come full circle. Then it's time for you to relax and let me return the favor, I said. We had a nice talk over dinner. Nothing earth shattering, just catching up with each other's lives. We talked so much that we missed the movie. I'll go out with you again, but only if you let me buy dinner next time, my mother said as I dropped her off. I agreed. How was your date? My wife wanted to know when I got home that night. Nice. Nicer than I thought it would be, I said. She smiled her told you so smile. Since that night, I've been dating mom regularly. We don't go out every week, but we try to see each other at least a couple of times a month. We always have dinner and sometimes we take in a movie too. Mostly though, we just talk. I tell her about my daily trials at work. I brag about the kids and my wife. She fills me in on the family gossip. I can never seem to keep up on. She also tells me about her past. Now I know what it was like for my mom to work in a factory during World War II. I know about how she met my father there and how they nurtured a trolley car courtship through those difficult times. As I've listened to these stories, I've come to realize how important they are to me. They are my history. I can't get enough of them. But we don't just talk about the past. We also talk about the future. Because of health problems, my mother worries about the days ahead. I have so much living to do, she told me one night. I need to be there while my grandchildren grow up. I don't want to miss any of it. Like a lot of my baby boomer friends, I tend to rush around filling my at-a-glance calendar to the brim as I struggle to fit a career, family, and relationships into my life. I often complain about how quickly time flies. Spending time with my mom has taught me the importance of slowing down. And then going on to your next one, 80 number two, you have
Mama, Mrs. Blacks, Wichita Falls, Texas, Ruth, Bernice, Pat, Oldsmobile, Happy Birthday, Ruthie, and Dixie. So just stroke them phonetically. And um, remember, you can always have the proper names right by your side so you know how to spell them correctly. If you miss the spelling, that's your fault. Okay, so you have to have them right by your side. This is 80 number two lit for five minutes. I'll never forget the day mama made me go to a birthday party. I was in Mrs. Black's third grade class in Wichita Falls, Texas, and I brought home a slightly peanut buttery invitation. I'm not going, I said. She's a new girl named Ruth, and Bernice and Pat aren't going. She asked the whole class, all 36 of us. As Mama studied the handmade invitation, she looked strangely sad. <clears throat> then she announced, well, you are going. I'll pick up a present tomorrow. I couldn't believe it. Mama had never made me go to a party. I was positive I'd just die if I had to go. But no amount of hysterics could sway Mama. When Saturday arrived, Mama rushed me out of bed and made me wrap the pretty pink pearlized mirror brush and comb set she bought for $2.98. <coughs> she drove me over in her yellow and white 1950 Oldsmobile. Ruth answered the door and motioned me to follow her up the steepest, scariest staircase I'd ever seen. Stepping through the door brought great relief. The hardwood floors gleamed in the sun-filled parlor. Snow white doilies covered the backs and arms of well-worn, overstuffed furniture. The biggest cake I ever saw sat on one table. It was decorated with nine pink candles, a messily printed happy birthday Ruthie, and what I think were supposed to be rosebuds. 36 Dixie cups filled with homemade fudge were near the cake, each one with a name on it. This won't be too awful. Once everyone gets here, I decided. Where's your mom? I asked Ruth. Looking down at the floor, she said, well, she's sort of sick. Oh, where's your dad? He's gone. Then there was a silence except for a few raspy coughs from behind a closed door. Some 15 minutes passed, then 10 more. Suddenly, the terrifying realization set in. No one else was coming. How could I get out of here? As I sank into self-pity, I heard muffled sobs. Looking up, I saw Ruth's tear-streaked face. All at once, my eight-year-old heart was overwhelmed with sympathy for Ruth and filled with rage at my 
35 selfish classmates springing to my white patent leather feet i proclaimed at the top of my lungs who needs them ruth's startled look changed to excited agreement there we were two okay you all so that concludes class for today i know it's a lot but uh, please try and keep up daily because you only have access for a week so please have a great day type one of those up remember you need three dailies a week for the a so type one up the one that you felt the best at turn it in to say it's a daily or grade it it's up to you okay have a great day you all